Have I mentioned that I recently took up blacksmithing? Well, I have, and it's been awesome. I love the stuff that I've been able to make, and I can see how in the future I'm going to add custom ironwork to my woodworking and make even more specialized pieces for videos and for client work. It's been great. I do have one problem, though. I smith at a local club, and every week we get together and work for about three hours, which is great. I learn a lot every time I go. But that three hours is really packed with activity. I'm working on projects, I'm being taught by the more experienced smiths, and I'm trying to learn new techniques. And in that little bit of time, I'm not necessarily practicing the basics or working on my fundamentals. So while I'm learning more advanced techniques or making a new thing, I might not be paying attention to things like ergonomics. And that's kind of a problem, because with any craft, you've always got to be practicing the basics. Now, I do have a basic forging setup out in my backyard. But I live in northern Ohio, and it's December, so... No, thank you! What I need is a way that I can practice down here in my shop, where it's a tolerable temperature, and I can actually focus on what I'm doing. And luckily, I've come up with a method for practicing the basics of forging down here in my shop, with no forge, no fire, no anvil, and no chance of burning my whole house down. The heart of my practicing system is this cheap metal electrical conduit. You can buy a piece, but you shouldn't have to. Electricians throw away tons of this stuff every day. There's a guy near me with an open dumpster, and I can literally go past any day of the week and pull a bucket full of scraps out of his dumpster for free. The great thing about this material is that when you hit it with a decent hammer, it resists you, but it also deforms in a smooth and predictable way. It's similar to hot steel. Not exactly the same, but close enough for practice. And I've been able to work on a lot of different techniques with nothing but this conduit. You also really need a decent hammer, but up until just recently, I did all of my smithing with this inexpensive cross-peen hammer. This is a Craftsman hammerhead. I bought it used at a flea market for $2. I put on this thick, untapered handle made out of white oak, and one of the more experienced smiths showed me how to dress the face of it so that it was nice and round and smooth. I used this thing exclusively for four or five months, and this hammer is fine, especially when you're just starting out. Grab something like this and get going. The last thing you need is a striking surface. Now, I own a good anvil, but it's outside and covered in snow. And maybe you don't own an anvil at all. That's fine. You don't need one to practice. What you just need is a decent piece of wood. Hardwood is really good. This is just a piece of scrap oak that I got off the side of the road. I'm going to put it in my vise, just like this, and tighten it up so that it's roughly at the same height my anvil would be if I were forging. Now, I don't want my vise taking the full force of all the hammer blows, so underneath this piece of wood, I'm just going to slide under a couple other blocks of scrap so that it's supported. If you don't have a big hardwood post like this, you could even use something really simple like a construction grade 4x4. You'll mash up the top pretty quickly, but who cares? Take a slice off of it and keep working. By the time you've reduced the entire thing to wood chips, you will have taught yourself a lot about hammer control and moving stock around. The way you grip your hammer is really important. I hold mine pretty close to the head, especially if it's a heavier hammer. And the grip is really loose. You generally want to be holding your hammer mostly with your thumb and your index finger, and the other fingers are curled very loosely around the hammer. The more experienced Smiths always tells me that at the top of your stroke, someone should be able to just grab the hammer and take it right out of your hand. Your grip should be that loose when it's up at shoulder height, like this. Now when I'm smithing, I try to let gravity do as much of the work as possible. So I'm putting most of the energy into my stroke when I'm picking the hammer up. When I send the hammer down towards the work, it's very little forearm or elbow. It's all back of the arm and back muscles, the large muscle groups that are firing to put a burst of energy into that hammer. And especially when it gets down close to the work, I'm really not tensing or putting any muscle energy into it at all. Down at the bottom here, it's almost entirely gravity that's transferring the force of the hammer into the work. That really reduces wear and tear all over your body. I've had tendonitis and tennis elbow a bunch of times already. I'm really trying hard not to get a new injury just because I've taken up a new craft. Now, any blacksmithing teacher will work with you on hammer control. 
but I've found that it's just as important to think about your left hand technique, because you can hurt your left hand almost as easily as your right. I have a tendency to grip things much too hard, and then if my blows aren't placed very well and I'm strangling the stock, I'm transferring a huge amount of force up the stock to my hand and then up my left arm, and that's really bad. After a long night of smithing, I've had times where my left hand has gone kind of numb on me, and that's definitely a sign that I'm doing something wrong. In watching the more experienced smiths, I've noticed that their grip on the stock is very light. They're barely holding it, and they never have a hard death grip on it like this. They're just positioning it where they want on the anvil and then striking it in such a way that the force is going into the anvil, not into the stock and back up their arm again. If you're working, whether it's practice or real smithing, and you feel big, heavy shocks traveling up your left arm, you need to change something about your technique. You could be holding the stock at an angle and then hitting it down into the anvil instead of holding it on the anvil, where you get a solid hit and essentially no vibration traveling up your left arm. Now that we've got our basic ergonomics worked out, we can move on to some actual smithing techniques. One of the things I work on a lot is accuracy and consistency. It might seem like you can pick a point on a piece of steel and hit it with a hammer really easily, but once you get down to doing it, it's trickier than it looks. So one of the things I do is grab a sharpie and make several points down the length of a piece of stock, maybe about an inch apart. Then I go with the hammer and I try to hit each of those points on direct dead center. And I go back and forth, alternating between them, changing my focus and trying to hit a consistent blow right on that point every single time. It's tougher than it looks, but a little bit of practice pays off and your accuracy will improve pretty quickly once you start doing it. We can also practice some more specific moves that actually apply to making projects in the shop. For instance, one of the things you do often is put a taper on a piece of stock, and you can practice that even with this condo. Put the stock against the edge of your striking surface, lift it up a little bit, and then hit the end with glancing half on, half off blows, one on each side of a square. When you get to the end, you should be able to look at the end of your conduit and see how good your taper would be. Now, this is conduit, so it's not going to taper like an actual piece of stock would, but you can look at the end and see if you've got a nice, neat square. If you do, congratulations, that would have been a perfect short taper. If one of your corners is longer than the other, then you still need to work on your technique. I still need to work on my technique, but that's fine, that's why I'm practicing. Now one thing that happens a lot in blacksmithing is you might need a piece of square bar, but all you have is round stock to work with. Well, that's no problem, you can just square it up, and you can practice this technique. Once you've put your taper on the end and you've got a nice square tip, you can use that to guide yourself in squaring up the entire piece. What I usually do is set one side flat against the anvil and then I work in short six inch sections. I'll move along one side creating a flat face, turn it 90 degrees, and flatten that face, and then repeat and repeat until I have the whole thing roughly square. Then, and this is the key part, I go back over my work and I tighten it up. It's not going to be perfect after you've made it roughly square. There's going to be parts that are bulgy and round and the corners aren't going to be good. But even using this conduit, you can go back over it with the hammer and refine it slowly, making the corners straight and sharp and making the faces as smooth as possible. By the time you're done, you can have a surprisingly flat square just made out of this round conduit. Another thing that you might want to do is practice some of the bending and curling techniques that we commonly use with flat stock when we're at the forge. First thing to do is take one of the pieces that you've just squared up and beat it flat. That's going to make it into something a lot like a piece of solid bar stock. Then you can practice all sorts of different things with it. One of my favorite things to do is hang it off the edge of my anvil just a little bit and practice getting a nice right angle on there. I usually do a couple of half on, half off blows, then bring it up to the anvil and hit it on end a couple of times, hit it over the side. I try a couple of different things using different techniques until I get a nice sharp 90 degree bend. And you can just unbend it and do it again a couple of times. The conduit's really flexible and it puts up with a lot of stress before it breaks. Once you've gotten good at doing that 90 degree bend, feel free to unbend it and then you can practice some curling. Now I don't have an anvil with a proper horn down here, 
But what I just do is take a piece of iron pipe and clamp it to my bench with a couple of heavy duty bar clamps. And that gives me something pretty close. I can use that to do some basic curling and scrolling techniques that lets me get smooth curves into the steel. It's not nearly as good as having hot stock and a real anvil with different diameters, but it's still a good way to practice, and I can get some nice smooth curves in my work just using this conduit. So I know some people are going to scoff at this video. They're going to say, you're not an experienced smith, you're just a beginner, and that's not smithing. Well, you're right, it's not. I'm not an experienced smith, and it's not smithing. It's just a practice routine I worked out something that I find helpful. Maybe you'll find it helpful too. If you do, think about going over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and checking out all the rest of my content. I do a lot of woodworking stuff and wood turning, but also metalwork and work with plastics. So there's all sorts of fabrication and creativity content that I have there. And I've got all sorts of extras and exclusive stuff just for my patrons. I also recently released my first book. It's called One Week to Wood Turning. And it teaches you how to set up a studio for turning on the wood lathe in just a week with a limited budget. Turning is an amazing and incredibly rewarding art form. And you can get going on it without too much time and without too much investment. And I want to help you with that. So if you're interested, go to rexkruger.com book and you can check out all the details. And for everybody who watched this video, thanks for watching.